So if you have any concern for your uh, video to be shown uh, in the recording, please be mindful of that and have your uh, have your uh, cameras off. Okay, I am setting a live on Facebook as well. What Facebook page are you on? I will type in a chat box for you. So okay. yeah, yeah, I, we, we are, I will I started uh, introducing myself. Uh, let me put the Facebook page as well. I'm setting it up. Okay, everyone, uh, thanks for joining to this virtual live uh, of uh, Persian Gardens. Uh, let me start this uh, presentation with introducing myself. Uh, my name is Bahman. Uh, I am originally Iranian and I live in Melbourne, Australia. So I think most of you guys are based in the US and uh, it should be 8 p.m. in New York time, uh, 5 p.m. California, the other city is something in between, unless you live in Hawaii. Uh, but it is Sunday, 10 a.m. in the morning. So I kind of talking from the future with you. Uh, a little bit of background. I am an electrical engineer, but since I was a teen, uh, in my teenager age, I used to be a guide. So. In the same time as being an engineer, I've been a tour guide as well. And uh, I did lots of tour guiding in the countries like Iran and the countries around, also in Australia. Since the pandemic has started, I came up with the idea of introducing Iran virtually. And since then, uh, I did lots of uh, virtual tours of Iran. As a part of those uh, activities, I am doing a monthly live that you are attending on one of them at the moment. And uh, that this visual live is about uh, Persian gardens around the world. So again, uh, we have around 70 people in the group now. Uh, again, if you could mute yourself and turn off your cameras so everyone can get a, a proper bandwidth, that would be really great. If you find your connection to Zoom a bit uh, problematic, uh, you can watch the live on Facebook as well in the same time. So what I do, I leave the link to my Facebook page on the chat box. Great. Uh, let me start the presentation now. Again, this uh, presentation being recorded, if you have any uh, concern of having your faces or videos on the recording, please have your cameras off. Uh, today, I want to talk about the Persian gardens. Persian gardens are the realization of the paradise in the earth in a climate like Iran, which is a dry climate. So naturally not really suitable to uh, having a garden or a green place for people to enjoy. Uh, it's an ancient art and uh, it has lots of influences on the styles of the Persian gardens all around the world. What I want to do today, I want to take you to different Persian gardens around the world talk about different elements, talk about the history, show how Persian gardens uh, changed from a place to place, and also uh, talk a little bit about history. I will finish this live with a uh, inspiration part as well. 
So the very last part will be a part that I can provide some ideas how you can patronize your backyard, how you can patronize your garden, all these kind of things. Uh, let me start this uh, live with a video. That is a video of a Persian garden, which is located in Kashmir, in northern India, uh, in the city of Srinagar, which is a very beautiful city. This city has one of the richest heritages uh, in terms of uh, the Persian style gardens. It's got a very beautiful lake right next to the city. And uh, there are two beautiful gardens right next to the lake. Uh, this uh, really nice video give you a vibe of how Persian gardens are, how, how is the vibe and how the local people over the time uh, got engaged in the Persian garden and they spend time to enjoy the beauty of the Persian garden. Another thing that I can see a great mixture of Iranian and international people has joined to this live, which is really great. It's an honor to uh, talk about my culture for a wide range of audiences. So let me start the live with this uh, nice video. And after that, I will continue the tour. Oops, sorry for that.
Okay, after this uh, initial video that will highlight some of the main elements of patient garden and how the whole uh, area is, it's the time to start our trip around Iran to show you some of the best patient gardens that we have in the country. Uh, I will start uh, this section of patient garden from the little town of Mohan which is not far from uh, the city of Kerman in the southeast of the country. Uh, in this little town, we have a really nice and cute garden that lots of people believe it's the best example of Persian garden that we have inside the country. And uh, that's why I chose this garden as our start. Uh, let me share a photo, a slide, uh, that will show you this garden from the top. So to do this presentation, I uh, do some 3D imaging as well. In this way, you can get to see all the uh, attractions in the 3D mode to give you a much better sense of the places. Uh, here you can see a uh, Mohan garden from the top and that's intentional. I wanted you guys to see uh, how a patient garden is. You can see a desert. You can see it's, it's a very, very dry land here. Nothing existed and there is a wall and inside the wall it's a paradise style garden. That's why a uh, Persian garden is the realization of the concept of the paradise on earth. There is a gate. As soon as you cross the gate, you will be in the paradise. Uh, as you can see from this top, uh, the Persian garden has four different sections. The two lower sections are much bigger most of the time. The two upper sections are smaller. So if you have a look at the Persian garden from the top, you will see it like a cross. Also, the Persian garden is always enclosed, and that is to put an emphasis on the uh, green areas inside and on the dry areas outside. Okay, no worries. Uh, and the other things, we have the flow of the water. So Persian gardens are always in four sections. And... Uh, the reason of that is that uh, if you have a look at the Persian God, uh, like in the old Persian belief, the earth has four corners. Also, that's representing the four elements, water, wind, soul, and fire. Persian gardens has lots of meaning and symbols behind it. It's a great balance of the sensory elements and also the symbolic elements. That was an introduction of Persian Gardens. So now let's go and visit Mohan Gardens. After this uh, screen from the top, I want to take you to the entrance of Persian Garden. So usually Persian Gardens has a beautiful entrance. And can see the garden from here. So when you want to get into a patient garden, what, all what you need to do to get into the uh, main hall and cross the main hall, which we call it in Persian Hashti. When you cross Hashti, you are into paradise from the external world. Uh, this has a symbolic meaning as well. It shows the realm of the soul and paradise of the soul. So when you get into the Persian Garden, usually the view that you get is a magnificent building uh, with a really open stall to the environment, different layers of the trees, and movement of the water. Uh, Persian Gardens usually never are steep. They are either totally flat or they are steep or, or they are terraced, as you can see in Mahan Garden. Uh, let me take you further up 
in Mohan Garden and show more of this beautiful garden to you at the start of the tour. So it might be a few second delay, sometimes until I switch to the new screen. Again, this video is being recorded. So if you have any uh, concern of your camera being, your video being shown, please have your cameras off. And given that we have so many people on this presentation today, please have your uh, videos off to get the proper bandwidth. Now, now we are further up in Mohan Garden. You can see the beauty of the garden and we're actually right next to the building here. So usually always at the cross section of the waterways, we have a beautiful pavilion. So either if you have a pavilion or a palace or anything like that, there is one factor which is really important that this building need to be uh, extroverted. An extroverted architecture style means that you need to be exposed to the greenery of the garden from almost every single room. Uh, Persian gardens has different elements uh, and different types. Most popular type, as you can see here, are the leisure gardens. So these gardens has been built to have some pleasure and joy. It's full of different sensory elements, like the beautiful flowers, different trees, the trees that have different colors in different uh, time of the year, uh, the nice breeze, the play of sun and shade. I will talk more about that in the other parts of the tour. There are other types of uh, Persian gardens as well. I will show some examples of that. Some of them are uh, like palace garden. You can see the main building from another angle. And another very popular type is a uh, tomb garden. Uh, after showing this beautiful garden and imagine you get into this beauty as soon as you cross the wall and you're getting out of the uh, dry area outside. Uh, I want to take you to another city and that one is the beautiful city of Kashan. Uh, Kashan is a very old city. It's one of the main touristy places that lots of people got to visit. And uh, what is the reason that Kashan is important are okay, good questions. Uh, Mohan Garden is not very old. It's around 150 years old. And uh, most of the times, these gardens are free of charge. People can get in very easily. And most of the time, the water resources came out of the... The water resources are from underground water channels or canals. So since very ancient times, Iranian managed to dig the underground water channels and transfer the water to the places that they wanted to create a garden or farm. So this is the main reason that we have water resources. In Mohan Garden, there are mountains in a distance of 20K away and people dig the underground water channel. They transfer the water all the way towards Mohan Garden. At the Mohan Garden, the water came out of the surface, and after that, it goes down again to go to the city. Uh, now we are in Finn Garden. Uh, Finn Garden is the oldest uh, Persian garden that we still have in the country. So this version of garden has been built around 550 years ago to 600 years ago. Uh, the garden is famous for its beautiful pavilion. And it's amazing decoration, which is from the Safavid time. And Shahab was the great, the king of Iran on that days, uh, ordered to make this pavilion in the garden. Before Safavid time, it used to be another garden in this place, but the renovation has been done in the Safavid time. That's why we don't know how was the older garden. Again, the water here comes from the underground water uh, channel or cannot. Uh, 
now I want to talk about the main elements that creating Persian gardens. There are three main elements that are very important and you need to really consider about designing them and using them in a Persian garden. As you can see, and as I have a right question about, the first element which is very important is uh, water. So a Persian garden does not exist without water. As we need to irrigate the plants, also the water is important for uh, creating a nice breeze and cool down the garden and creating a more pleasant environment. Also the water uh, is the factor that uh, sectionizes the garden. So because of the garden, uh, because of the water, you can create that section, but the water plays a much more role than that. Another reason that we have the water, because water flows and create a really nice sound, especially when we have a terraced garden, we can create little waterfalls that can create a really nice sound in the garden. And water is the element that connect the four sections to each other. So in this way, water is harmonizer and water create a rhythm which is really important to create a balance. Also from symbolic point of view, the water is the symbol of the ancient Iranian deity Anahita. Anahita is the deity of the water and it's the symbol of pureness and uh, harmony. So having the water in all different parts of the garden has that meaning as well. It's referring back to Anahita. After introduction of Islam, uh, the Quran says about the gardens that has the trees and has the water flowing on from down the trees added to the concept of Persian garden as well. So having water in a Persian garden can have that uh, connotation in the same time. From the beautiful city of Kashan. Oh, thank, thanks Mark for sharing that. Uh, from the beautiful city of Kashan, I want to take you to Shiraz, which is in the south. Everyone knows about the famous Shiraz wine. Shiraz is the city of po garden, poetry, flowers, and wine. It's a really nice city in the south. And uh, we have lots of different beautiful Persian garden in Shiraz. Uh, what I want to do, I will share a short video that highlights some of the really most uh, interesting Persian gardens in Shiraz. And after that, I will take you to Eran Garden, which is the most important Persian garden that we have in the city of Shiraz. I should say we have 20 beautiful Persian garden in Shiraz that are very important because of the design and style. The Persian gardens in Shiraz is more than that. But uh, just having a little bit of information, the really nice gardens that are important because of their style are around 20. So if you want to visit all those Persian garden in Shiraz, need to spend quite uh, like two or three days to be able to see all of them. Uh, I let you enjoy this short video. And after that, we start visiting Iran Garden. Yes, that's correct, Leila. Like throwing the coins has the same uh, reason. Yeah, very good. Uh, thanks for helping me on this.
after this quick video that was highlighting some of the main element of uh, a page uh, Shiraz and some of the main gardens in Shiraz, the best place in the world that you can find uh, beautiful Persian gardens, it is the time to go to Aram Garden and visit this beautiful garden in the heart of Shiraz. Aram, it's another word with paradise and uh, what we can see here in Eram Garden is the latest version of the garden in the same location. So this garden has built by one of the uh, Qashqai tribe's leaders. It's rebuilt in the older place. It's around 200 years ago, from 200 years old. Uh, it is the most beautiful Persian garden, but it's a classic example of a Persian garden. It's the most popular one in Shiraz. Uh, one of the really interesting elements are, is the beautiful pavilion in the middle of the garden. But also here is the part that I want to talk about the second important element in a Persian garden, which is tree. So water was the first element. And the second important element that create Persian, a Persian garden is the tree. So. In a Persian garden, we always need to have the different trees with different elevation. And the goal is to create the green vision for the different levels of the eyes. So if you wanna uh, watch in front of you, you need to have some greenery. If you want to watch up, if you wanna watch down, you need to have some greenery. That's why there are always different types of the trees in a Persian garden with different uh, elevation. But more importantly, we always need to have uh, tall trees in Persian garden and usually in line with the flow of the water. The most popular tall tree is cypress tree, which in uh, Iranian symbolism, in Zoroastrianism, used to be the symbol of Ahura Mazda. Also cypress trees are the symbol of happiness, fineness, and they are also very popular all around. Usually people try to plant the evergreen trees to have that greenery of the tall trees all year round. But apart from cypress trees, you can find the pine trees as well with the symbolic meaning that they are the symbol of honesty, life, power, and fertility. Or you can find the plain trees. Plain trees become very popular during the Islamic period. Before that, it wasn't really popular to have uh, plain trees in a Persian garden. Plain trees are the symbol of magnificence and greatness. Also, especially in Isfahan, we can find lots of ash trees as well. And ash trees are the symbol of harmony, production, and humility. So usually the tall trees are in line with the flow of the water. Uh, there are some reasons for that. One of the reasons to put the shade on top of the water to minimize the evaporation. So we can maintain the um, uh, volume of the water, given that I Iran is a very dry land. Also, the tall trees, that shade, which is in line with the water, can help the whole area, especially when you're sitting uh, along with the water, to be much cooler and having a better climate. Usually, the pavilions are always built in line with the direction of the water, and lots of the times water flow from the ground level and the main reason is to create a breeze a cool humid breeze over the uh, summertime to cool down the whole pavilion and uh, another reason that we have different type of trees in a Persian garden is to providing uh, sun and shade so now that we get to this place Persian garden is about the balance it's about the balance of the sensory elements we always playing with the colors, with the scents, and with the wind, and with the sound in a Persian garden. But it is about making the whole elements deeper than that. And it's all about imagination and going to the realm of soul. So uh, having the play of sun and shade in a Persian garden and having the water are also two elements that help us to trigger our imagination, to enjoy a deeper level of the beauty of a Persian garden, which is designed to, to be the realization of the paradise on earth. Uh, 
after this, from the beautiful city of Shiraz, I want to take you to Isfahan, but I need to add that we always have the uh, three uh, fruit trees in a Persian garden as well. And the most popular tree that uh, if the climate let us, we always love to plant is the orange tree. And the main reason is the nice uh, perfume of the blossoms in the spring. Usually in the places like Shiraz or even in the Spain, in some areas in India, orange trees and jasmines are or used to be very popular. And the main reason were the good scents. From here, I want to take you, take you to, uh, uh, take you to the beautiful city of Isfahan. Yes, the this pavilion used to be the leisure home of the head of the Qashqai tribe and after that he uh, donated to the public. Nowadays it is the faculty of the law, law Shiraz uh, University and the law faculty. I start uh, the garden in Shiraz uh, the, in Isfahan from Hasht Behesht garden. Behesht in Persian means paradise, it's another word for paradise and uh, I start this part of the tour with this uh, beautiful uh, pavilion that we have in the center. This pavilion is a four corner pavilion and uh, it's got eight gates. The reason that it's got eight gates is that based on the belief of Iranian, the paradise has eight gates. So when you have a building in the center of a paradise stall garden, the building needs to have eight gates to symbolize that uh, paradise concept. Here in uh, Hasht Behesht garden, I want to talk about the last element of a Persian garden and that one is the flowers. So trees, flowers and water, hands in hands, create, creates a paradise style garden. The uh, flowers can be planted uh, as a seasonal, especially in front of the pavilions or also they can be planted in line with the tall trees like jasmine flowers and this kind of thing. The most popular tree that you can find in a Persian garden is rose. Uh, flowers has the main role to create the vibrant colors for the eyes to be in line with the greenery of the trees or to create the seeds in the garden, which is a really important one in a Persian garden. Uh, roses, are planting for the beauty and fragrance. Also, they are the symbol of eternity. Also lilies, especially in the places like in the European gardens, they are very popular in the Persian gardens in Spain and other parts of Europe. You can see a good view of Hasht Behesh, which used to be an, uh, one of the old palaces in Isfahan. And it's another example of a leisure garden. The other garden that I want to show you in Isfahan before taking you to India, is Chehel Sotun Palace. So Chehel Sotun Palace is the example of a palace garden that I wanted to show you that I was talking about. Uh, Chehel Sotun, uh, Chehel Sotun Palace as used to be one of the main pal uh, palaces of Shah Abbas in Isfahan. Uh, you can see the garden uh, and the big pool of the water. From this angle, you can see the reflection of the entrance gate. So if you go to the entrance gate, you can see uh, the reflection of the entrance. So Chehel Sutun in Persian means 40 columns. If you count these columns, don't worry if you don't want to count it now. I already counted for you. There are 20 columns here. So the reason this place gets called as Chehel Sutun is because of the reflection. If you, when you enter into the garden, you can see uh, the reflection of all the 20 columns in the water. And 20 plus 20 is 40. That's why it gets called Chehel Sotun. Here is an example of how water is used to create imagination. So, and one of the main reasons that we have the pools is to create reflection to help us to trigger our imagination. So when you get into a Persian garden from the usually dry area outside, you have the feeling of getting into a really green place, pleasure place with lots of sensory elements. After you get in, after you get relaxed, it's the time to activate your imagination. 
to start imagine about the all different beautiful elements and uh, the meanings behind the symbols has been used in the Persian garden. And there are lots of different factors that can help you to start using imagination and helping you to explore in the paradise of your soul. Uh, and this is a part that I need to say, one of the main uh, ideas behind a Persian garden was a psychological healing thing. And all these elements, all this balance, rhythm and harmony are designed to be healing from the psychological point of view. Uh, Chehel Sotun used to be a public garden from time to time. Shahabas loved to throw lots of parties for the public. And people used to come here and enjoy Shahabas parties, especially it was a feast or eat or a victory in a war. From here, let me switch my screen again and take you to India. There are lots of Persian gardens outside modern Iran. Uh, the most famous uh, Persian garden that, that we have outside Iran is Taj Mahal. Everyone knows Taj Mahal. Uh, the style of the garden has changed uh, a little bit by British when they were ruling uh, India. And like they uh, shaved the trees and they created some uh, massive lawn areas. Still, we can see the basics of a Persian garden design here. We have the floor of the garden. We have a four section garden. I should say the difference in uh, Indian garden or Mughal garden as it's told. With the gardens that you find in Iran is that the four sections are symmetrical. Uh, Taj Mahal is around, I think, uh, 400 years old on top of my head when I'm remembering that. Uh, these gardens get called Mughal garden because they've been set with the Mughal dynasties who were ruling India. These Mughal dynasties were ruled in Iran before they got into India. And because of that, they had a massive influence from different aspects of Iranian art, including poetry and garden. When they arrived to India, they created buildings, some really nice gardens that we can find them all around India. And Taj Mahal is the most popular one. Uh, it's been built by Shah Jahan, and uh, it was for the wife of uh, Shah Jahan when she passed away. The interesting thing, the landscape and architect was a guy from Shiraz who came to India and built this magnificent building. Uh, you can see all those Iranian architecture elements here as well. Uh, these Mughal gardens or Persian gardens in India are tomb gardens. So one of, lots of the different factors in Persian gardens was to dematerializing the sensory elements. What we can get in Mughal gardens in India is to go one step uh, beyond that. And the gardens is also about creating a balance between life and death. So people come, enjoy the beauty of the Persian garden where there is a really nice tomb in the center. So this is a different uh, way of designing, different philosophy of designing. And that's what is the celebrating the death where the other people are alive and enjoying their life. The second Persian garden that I want to show you here is uh, Homayun garden, Homayun tomb. Which is in Agra, Homayun tomb is not as famous as uh, my tomb is in Delhi. It's not as famous as uh, Taj Mahal, but it is the best preserved uh, Persian, Persian uh, Mughal garden or tomb garden that we have in India. So let me take you to Homayun tomb. You can see the same elements. You can see the water flow. One of the interesting thing after British got into India, they uh, cut all the orange trees and uh, lots of cypress trees and jasmines. And over the time, the adaptation happened in India and lots of the local trees being planted. What we can see in Homayun tomb, apart from that the tomb uh, is really very well preserved, the type of the tree and the hedges and the other things uh, still remain from the original uh, Mughal style. 
Uh, yes, Kathy, you can unmute yourself and ask a question if you like. Kathy? Oh, yeah, my question was who's buried at that tomb? Is in, that Homayun? The... in Homayun tomb? Yes, this tomb that we're looking at. Yes, I will explain it right now. Okay. <laughs> So Homayun is the name of the king who has uh, Homayun is the name of the king that has buried in that part, in that in that tomb in the middle of the palace, in the middle of the garden. Uh, Homayun in Persian, and that was the name of that king, means uh, lucky. And King Homayun in his life was anything but lucky. I have another question. I will get back to you after telling this story. So Homayun, when he was a princess waiting for his dad to pass away and become a king, was exiled in Iran because his dad was really afraid of him. When at a very long time, when Homayun uh, was dead, when his dad was dead, when he came to the power, Homayun was already old, uh, but he had that ref reputation that he loved to enjoy quite a lot. Uh, like enjoy the women, the garden, all these kind of things. Uh, when he get to the power, he moved to Agra to start his uh, reign. But he was so unlucky for that because six months after he started being a king, when he was walking down the stairs, he fell over and his head got hit to one of the stairs and he passed away right away. So when he passed away, and given that he has that reputation of uh, loving the pleasure and sensory uh, pleasure, people built a really nice tomb for him. And mentioning that he wasn't lucky in his life, but we make a really nice tomb for him. So he will be lucky after his death, his tomb would be in the center of a beautiful garden, to have all those sensory pleasures and people remembering him uh, after his death. That is the story of Homayun, who has buried in the middle of this patient garden. I saw that another person raised his or her hand. Uh, feel free to ask your questions. Any other question? Okay, yeah, I have a question. Why did the British cut down the tree? Uh, the reason that they did that, like when they arrived to India uh, in the very beginning, uh, they didn't really have that much of sense of the depths of the culture over there. So uh, it was a bit of focus for British and they were using the garden for themselves to make everything uh, similar to what he has seen in uh, Britain, in the UK. And you know, British garden is also another important uh, type of gardening. And one of the main elements in a British garden is having lawns, like having grasses all around. That's the main reason that they cut all those trees. Uh, after this uh, travel in India, I want to take you back to Iran to Pasargat, which is a couple of hour drive northern uh, Shiraz. And it's the time that I want to talk about the uh, roots and history of the Persian garden. So here in Pasargat, uh, you, you can see the tomb of Cyrus the Great. Cyrus is the old Iranian king who actually created Persia 2,600 years ago. So this place that you can see is a very important uh, ancient site. And this tomb was just a tiny part of the Cyrus royal complex. So in the older days, in the area that you can see here, uh, it used to be a whole lots of palaces like this place that you can see the columns from the Cyrus tomb. tomb. And the area all between the tombs used to be lots of Persian style gardens. There are lots of archaeological evidences uh, in the excavations that prove this theory. There are lots of remaining parts from the irrigation systems and different system that used to 
irrigating the uh, garden that we have here in Pasargat. So Pasargat is the oldest version of a Persian garden that we can find. And interesting to say, we can see all those elements that I talked about. We can, uh, in the inscriptions, uh kate i have question yes yes usually the water in the pool and the uh, waterways uh used to it's for irrigation as well why not attempt to recreate the uh indian gardens uh i will talk about that later uh it's partly because not uh like these gardens been in that store for quite a long time. So like it, they kind of widely accepted by the public to be in the same fashion. Uh, when we do the uh, excavation and research in Pasar God, we can see that all the elements that I talked about uh, like the, exist there. So the gardens in Pasar God has four sections. And that is the concept of Chahar Baq. Uh, Chahar means four and Baq means garden. And uh, from the inscription, we can see that lots of the trees that we had those days, still using these days, the trees like cypress or orange. Uh, you can see the territory of the Saris the Great and Pasargad in the, in the south, which is not far from Shiraz and Persepolis, another important ancient site. Uh, here is the recreation of Pasar God. Uh, here is the palace that I showed the columns. Uh, we have different range of gardens in the same place. And here is the pl uh, plan of the whole garden area. Actually, here we used to have different uh, Chahar box. And uh, here in Pasar Gadi, we have the combination of all different types of Persian gardens. We have a tomb garden here. We had a pleasure garden here. And we had a, a, a leisure garden here in the center. But now that I talked about Pasar Gadi 2,600 years ago, I want to take you older than that. Right next to Pasar Gadi, there is another ancient hill with a pavilion, remaining part of a pavilion on top of the hill uh, that is, does not exist in a Persian garden anymore. And this is a linking uh, clue for us to take the idea of the design of Persian garden to Babylon and uh, Mesopotamia. Uh, the name of this uh, place is Throne Hill. And it's the place that actually Cyrus used to stay to overlook the whole garden. And it used to be terraced back down. It might have been some waterfalls, same as Mahan Garden. And it is actually some elements that we can see it in Assyrian gardens, another uh, civilization in northern Babylon. So here are the remaining inscriptions from Assyria. That's from uh, a garden, which is from Sanakri. And you can see the same style. It's the throne uh, pavilion on top of a hill, which overlooks the garden down that has some elements of a Persian garden, flow of the water, a uh, uh, line of the trees with different elevations. It's more into that. It's another inscription and it's from Sargon, same style, same thing that we can find in uh, Pasargat. Here is another uh, 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 recreation of one of the other gardens which used to be in Nineveh in, As in Assyrian Empire. And it's a walled garden and it's a terraced garden, which actually can be the, where, where the roots of Mohan Garden and those terraced garden ideas come from. Uh, actually, this garden is the place that lots of archaeologists believe is the roots of the uh, hanging gardens of Babylon, which Greeks mentioned that used to be in Babylon and it was one of the seven wonders of the world. Uh, as we couldn't find any place that 
can suggest to us in Babylon that it used to be the uh, place that uh, Babylon it made that garden. And actually, Babylon is a very flat place, creating like such a terraced garden. It's not really something feasible there. And Assyria and Babylon uh, were right next to each other. And later in the time, Babylonid and uh, Persians, they conquered Assyria. And a big part of Assyria became a part of Babylon, especially in the time that the Greeks can remember. So it's a, it's a high chance that the Greeks can confuse the garden in Nineveh with uh, Semiramis or Babylonid garden. This is the recreation of uh, what is told about uh, hanging gardens of Babylon. And you can see that what we can see in the terraced garden, like Mahan garden, is very similar to these uh, hanging gardens in Babylon. That's a really interesting thing. And this ancient site in southern Iraq uh, is one of the places that we think it probably might have been one of the first versions of this style of gardens. It's from an, an older civilization, Sumerian uh, civilization, which dated back to 7,000 years ago. And the excavation has done, uh, suggests us that it's been some careful uh, consideration of the plants and some remaining parts of the ancient temples. So it's believed that the very first version of Persian gardens used to be temple garden, like temple gardens. Uh, yes, there's some kind of conservation happening. Not perfect, but people are careful about these gardens. Uh, from here, I need to add one more point before taking you towards the west, towards the European area. And that one is, there is a concept in, in the Bible, the Garden of Eden. And the Garden of Eden is actually uh, the same thing. It was the same concept of garden, uh, the gardens that has been created to regenerate the idea of the paradise in the earth. Uh, let's go towards the west. Before taking you to Spain, I want to take you to Istanbul and take you to Tukapi, one of the few examples of the gardens that had that influence from a Persian style garden. So Istanbul is the place that the East meet the West. And two copies is a great example that we can have. Uh, two copy is the place that we can have this impression. In two, two copy, we can have lots of influences from Persian architecture and Persian garden. Also lots of influences from the Greek and Roman gardens in the same time. This fusion is amazing. Today, I only want to talk about the Persian parts of a Persian, uh, elements of a Persian garden. Two copies, not a stall of a garden with a single palace in the center of a like four section garden. What we can find here is uh, different elements, different gardens, but lots of the buildings are in the form of the Persian pavilions. They extort the stall, central buildings in the center of gardens. In the Turkish language, people use the Persian word of Sarai for these kind of buildings that when you are inside them, you're gonna be exposed to the greenery of the garden. You have the local four sections in two copy as well, and the whole palace is uh, enclosed by a wall. So it's still the same thing, but what is really interesting here in two copy, and uh, we could have seen a little bit of uh, same style in, uh, Kashmir as well in the video that I showed it to you. In the same time, we have a wall, but from the, a big part of the palace, we are exposed to the beautiful nature around Tukapi. So Tukapi has a really good view of the Bosphorus and it's created a good uh, area. So in a part of Tukapi, we are surrounded by a walled garden and we can have that kind of idea of the enclosed garden that create us the meaning of the uh, paradise. But there are some chances to have the beauty of the garden and the beauty of Bosphorus in the same time. An example, uh, sorry, I couldn't find the right slide for that. Here from this place that uh, Ottoman kings used to say they pray, there is a really nice view to the Bosphorus. And this is one of the things that you find the uh, local adaptation. 
Also, another interesting thing that you find in uh, Ottoman gardens is the popularity of tulips. What are there in Istanbul? If you mean Istanbul, yeah. The, the thing is, Istanbul is not a desert, like what you can see inside Persia. So uh, it's a beautiful nature era, if it was your question, Linda. Uh, tulips. So inside Iran, roses used to be the most popular garden, uh, flowers in the gardens. But when we go to Turkey, tulips taking over. So tulip with the same... Uh, name as Persian Lale has the same alphabet as Allah. That's other symbolic ways that uh, Turkish use the concept of tulips. And even nowadays, when you go to the garden, you can find millions of colorful tulips all around. The last place that I want to show you before I start inspiring you with some designs is the gardens that we have in Spain. The most beautiful Persian garden or Islamic garden as it is told, uh, is in Granada, in southern Spain, and it's the Alhambra Garden. Alhambra means the red uh, palace or garden. Uh, Alhambra is kind of terraced garden. It has been built on top of a hill, so we have different uh, flat gardens and different layers. And we actually can see some of the great uh, elements of Persian garden. The flow of the water, the gardens are in four sections, uh, there is no slope. There are some extroverted pavilions. We can have that Arabic, Moorish, or Spanish uh, tweak into this building. And another interesting thing in uh, the Spanish garden is the abundance of orange trees to create the nice blossom over the springtime. Oops, my video got frozen. Sorry for that. From Alhambra Garden, I want to take you to second example of a Persian garden. And that one is in Seville. And that one is Alcazar Garden. Alcazar is the Spanish pronunciation of the word Alcazar, which in Arabic means a palace. So it's still uh, an Alcazar Garden, we have the same element. We have the flow of the water. We have the buildings, like enclosed wall, but it becomes in a form that we have uh, extroverted rooms all around to expose to the greenery and scents. But one of the very interesting thing that we can find in this Spanish garden and uh, in the places like uh, Chehel Sutun or Mohan Garden, we can see one of the same things. One of the old techniques of Persian garden and that one is to make the places that the trees are planted lower than the level of the walkways and the waterways. And the reason of that is when it was the spring, when the orange has that blossoms, people could have got the sense of the orange blossoms much better. So even in Taj Mahal, before the British got there, it used to be the same style. The trees used to be planted uh, lower than the walkways. So the uh, passengers, the people who were walking, could have got the scent of the trees. A British changed that style. It's very interesting to see one of these really old uh, techniques of design of a Persian garden here in Spain, far, far away from uh, Iran, where the origins of this garden come from. Here you can see one of the pavilions with the local an Islamic decoration, but also with an exposure to the greenery of the garden. Uh, let me see if I can run that uh, Alhambra again. Yeah. Let me finish this part of the tour with uh, another angle of Alhambra. The beautiful Islamic garden in Spain. And after that, it's time for the last part of the tour. And if you have any question, and I, I will be waiting for you at the end. Here's one of the other rooms. Alhambra have lots of different sections. Uh, and the focus on the water is really important. And 
every area. And you can find another really interesting thing that you find it in Iran. One of the other fruit trees that are very popular in Iran are pomegranates because of the colorful, bright fruits and flowers. And you can find the same thing in Spain, which is a really interesting thing. Uh, that was what I wanted to show you from Persian gardens. There are lots of Persian gardens around the world and in Iran. It was some of the highlights to give you a sense of the Persian gardens, but not everyone is a king. Not everyone has uh, that much money to uh, have like such a, such a sophisticated garden. But we are always with the wise uh, usage of the elements of a Persian garden. We can per uh, Persianize our gardens or our backyards or all these kind of things. So here will be a few minutes of inspiration of how we can Persianize our gardens. I start this inspiration part with the garden in New York, Antermaya Garden. Intermaya Gardens are a collection of the gardens. And here you can see the Persian garden of this uh, collection, this complex. Uh, you can see the idea of enclosing the garden and the modern use of the water in the old concept. Also the wise uh, usage of the popular gardens in the US in the old settings. It's a really interesting, uh, yeah, Linda, that's what I want to talk about. Yeah, very good question. Uh, it's, it's the start of this part of this tour. So what, a part of these inspirations come from the old Iranian houses. So usually the old Iranian uh, interior yards or uh, Hayat Pushti uh, has some main elements of a Persian garden. You can see some examples. We always has a pool of the water usually blue in the bald blue, right in the center of the backyard. And this pool uh, plays lots of role. It's got that harmonizing and rhythm factor, especially if it has a fountain and the bald color reflecting the color of the sky and the water and it creates uh, that imaginative factor. Also, we use uh, the symmetrical planting in two sections or four sections around the pool. And that's another element which is uh, the same concept of the Persian garden. So you can either plant the trees with flowers or plant the fruit trees to have the blossoms in the spring, or if you can, orange trees to, good, to get the good smells. Another really interesting thing is the usage of the flowers, the three elements that I told you. Here, either you have a space to uh, plant the flowers, but you can use the smart uh, user usage of the pots to create that flower aspect. You can put the pots here and there and create the best thing. You can use some uh, decoration things with other Islamic or Iranian uh, elements on that to give more twist. And if you cannot make a pavilion, you can always have a comfortable seat to be exposed to the green area of the garden. Also, if you want to go further than that, you can use those uh, motifs and symbols in the form of tiling, in the form of this kind of decoration. Even you can mix your hedges with some of this decoration factor to give that trick into your garden. I will finish this part of the tour uh, with uh, a sh another short video. And on that short video, you will be provided with some inspirations of uh, how to create a Persian garden. It's a collection of the photos of uh, lots of old Iranian houses and lots of other modern gardens that can give you some ideas in case if you wanted to use those things in a design of a Persian garden. And after that, I will be back for the question and answer.
Bon Dieu les ramène en ses jours vers toi. Okay, that was a virtual tour of Persian Garden. I hope you have enjoyed these uh, lives. Uh, feel free if you like to see the recordings, feel free to watch it in my group. I will share the link. Also, I upload the recordings in my YouTube channel. Uh, feel free if you want to subscribe. Uh, uh, in the YouTube channel, also in my page, you can see the recordings uh, of the other lives that I did. Also, there are lots of interviews about Iran. I leave the link here. If you want to like, uh, you can join the groups just in case if you like also the YouTube channel. And if you have any questions, I will be here. Please raise your hand or type in the chat box and I will answer all the questions. Yeah. Yeah, Michael, um, did you say that some of the gardens in the Alhambra Palace in Granada or Persian, not North African Arabic? Uh, the thing is, uh, those elements has been uh, taken to, uh, has been taken to uh, Spain by Arabic people. But what happened uh, after the introduction of Islam, shortly after that, uh, uh, Iran got conquered by uh, Arabic tribes. So when they got inside the ancient Persia, they inherited and they were open to lots of the different style of Iranian art or Iranian uh, architecture and these kind of things. And after that, when Arabs started moving towards the Northern Africa and Europe, they took all those uh, techniques with themselves. And it's not only the Persian garden. One of the great examples of the technology of Banat or underground water channels that Muslims took to the Northern Africa. So in the Northern Africa, they had that local influence from the local elements 
as architecture is, is never fixed, we always have influences from the environment. And after that, later in the time, when Arabs went, went to Europe, they took that concept from Northern Africa to Spain, which had lots of uh, the local elements of the Persian garden still. Another country that we can find the Persian garden nowadays is Morocco. And that shows the consistency, how the idea of Persian garden from Iran, it went to Syria in the first uh, Arabic uh, the dynasties. And after that, it went towards the North Africa. In Morocco, we had those examples. And from Morocco into Spain. Yeah. Any other question? Thank you. You're welcome. Any other question, comment? Okay, in the Southern California, Arizona disease, there are many native plants. The desert is not empty by any means. Is this true of desert in Iran? Yes, it's the same. So in the Iranian deserts, uh, like we either have some rainfall or by using the underground water channels from the uh, mountains that are not far away, it's always some chances to, uh, there are always some chances to, uh, uh create some irrigation and create some gardens yes that's correct so i will share the uh, live in a facebook page shortly uh somebody asked for the links i will leave the links to my page and youtube channel as, again as well is there any other question kathy uh yes yes kathy hopefully if the borders open soon uh I will uh, do the same thing. So yeah, if you be in my Facebook page or if you subscribe, I can, I will let you know. Yes, there, there is another Persian garden in Israel in the city of Haifa. And that one is a great example of Persian garden. That's correct. Any other question that I missed? Yeah, uh, wait until I, I will share it in my page now, just a sec. Let me finish the live in 